Welcome to another episode of Talk and Shop. I'm joined by my friend Stephen Fox, who luckily, compared to me, is out in San Diego, where I know you guys have had rain for a week or so, but in Indiana, it was like snowing yesterday. So yeah. hold up out in San Diego, night wet, nice weather. But Stephen, I thank you for taking some time to come on and talk about what you're experiencing from an advisor standpoint with everything going on. So first and foremost, how are you and the family doing? I mean, everything's actually going really well. I feel like we're a lot more fortunate than a lot of people are right now. Mm -hmm. uh, I guess first and foremost, everybody in our family is is totally healthy. We haven't been directly impacted by this virus like a lot of people have. So I, I think I'm really thankful for that. I have a, a wife and, and two young kids. They're, our daughter's three and a half and our son is uh, just under three months old. So uh, I guess that's first the most important thing to us is that mm -hmm. everyone's healthy. Uh, and we're all, I also feel lucky that I'm able to continue doing the work that I do of helping clients and, and hopefully having a great impact on their lives, uh, not having a huge economic impact from this, like a lot of people are who, of course, you can't do your work if your place of work is completely shut down. Uh, so I think overall, I feel really, really fortunate. We're not completely uh, like driving each other crazy yet, being stuck indoors all the time. Uh, we actually happen to seem to like each other a lot. So <laughs> overall, like I feel tremendously lucky on every front right now. Not to take a bad turn, but I do. I'm do interested to see what the divorce rate looks like yeah. coming out of yeah. here. I think that I think Desarte Yarnway tweeted something about that a week or so ago, and my response to him was, he said, "Do you think it will will cause divorces?" And I just said, "I think it might speed up relationships that are already on that path. It's going to help them get to that conclusion a little bit sooner because." Um, you know, if you're not communicating and trying to manage a family and work in this environment, it's just going to make things make things tough. Um, so I'm glad to hear everybody's doing well and you've got a good outlook on things. I, I was telling you offline that I feel like I'm in the same boat that we don't have any any health issues in you know, our immediate family, but even outside family being able to continue to do our job. Like very fortunate, very little complaints on my end. When I when I find myself frustrated with e-learning. I take a second and breathe and realize, hey, there's like if e-learning is what I'm complaining about, then I have nothing to complain about. Um, yeah. So you mentioned, you know, still being able to work, helping your clients. I know you have a great practice out there. How are things going with clients? Like, what are they? What are they saying right now? How are they holding up? Yeah, so uh, really, kind of a wide range of, of issues that people are facing. A few common trends, uh, questions that I'm dealing with regularly are around the. Uh, small business administration programs, the PPP and the EIDL mm -hmm. for our small business owner clients or for those who work for small businesses. Been answering a lot of questions around that stuff as well as trying to navigate that for myself, for our business. Um, a lot of questions around the, uh, the, the six month period for federal student loan forbearance that's going on right now. Since we work with a lot of younger clients, uh, younger higher earning professionals, most of our clients have really high student loans. And so that's a big part of what we do is student loan planning. So getting lots of questions around that. Uh, lots of questions around the stimulus checks. <laughs> and I know it's not the biggest uh, financial factor for a lot of people right now, but uh, for some reason it gets tons of attention. Lots of people have questions about that. Um, questions around the unemployment benefits, around market volatility, around lower interest rates. Should we refinance our home or business loan or student loans right now? So those are some common trends that we're seeing. Uh, but I think overall, a lot of my clients are doing a pretty good job of seeing this situation as a uh, a series of opportunities rather than as threats. A lot of people seem pretty optimistic and are looking for the best ways to navigate this and come out ahead of where they might've otherwise been instead of just kind of despairing and, and freaking out and think the world is ending. You didn't know I was going to ask you this, but I want to circle back to the student loan um, period, six month period. I bet a lot of advisors aren't aware of that part of the bill because they may not have a lot of clients who have the student loans. I think that sure. through this process, advisors are going to have more people reaching out for help because people realize they need the help navigating these things or just navigating their plan. So real quick, what is the student loan program that's going on for the next six months? Yeah, there are a few things. One of the biggest ones is that everybody who was in an income-driven repayment plan as of March 13th is going to receive six months of completely waived payments. So you don't make a payment at all, and they give you credit as if you had made that payment. So if you're on uh, pay-as-you-earn, revised pay-as-you-earn, income contingent repayments, any of the income-driven plans for uh, direct federal student loans, six months, just completely payment-free. You still get credit for it. Um, some of the confusion around that has been around if you have uh, direct federal student loans that are not in an income-driven plan, you do have an interest waiver for this period, but you don't still get credit for having made the payments that you didn't make. And if you have Perkins loans or Fell loans or any kind of private student loan, then this doesn't apply to you. So 
sometimes this creates good planning opportunities where it might make sense to do a direct loan consolidation and enter an income driven plan. Um, sometimes uh, it may or may not be a good time to make extra payments towards principal. Uh, it may or may not be a good idea to do income recertification. You have to really look at it case by case, mm -hmm. but uh, for some people, it's a tremendous opportunity right now. And almost every type of student loan is getting some sort of relief, even if it just comes directly from your servicer. So I think there's pretty broad consensus uh, within federal student loans and a lot of private lenders that they don't want this to be a period the student loan borrowers are, are exceptionally hard hit by. So on these programs, do they have to do anything or is it just automatically this is in place? You don't have to do anything. Yeah. So for those in income driven plans, it should be automatic. It should have been automatically processed by your loan servicer. But a lot of them didn't actually process that until early April. So if you made any payments on an income driven plan after March 13th, you can contact your loan servicer and ask them to refund you that payment and you'll still get credit for having made that payment. But they won't do that proactively. You have to call them and ask. So if you don't do that, you will only actually benefit from five of the six months that were waived by the federal government. And so a lot of people, if, if you have really high student loans from MBA program or medical school or whatever, I mean, their student loan payments could be $500 or $1,000 a month. And uh, that's just free money. Like just contact your loan servicer and say, hey, please refund this payment and they'll send it within a week or two. Awesome. Well, this part of our conversation, which I did not know was going to happen, which is why I love this, is going to make this a dual purpose video. So this is going to show up as a talk and shop on Advisor of Tomorrow, but I'm also going to run it through All About Your Benjamins as an inside advisor's mind. And maybe I'll cut it down just to that one segment, but I think there's a lot of people who you are looking for ways to tighten up the or tighten up the budget or find more income within their yeah. budget that this may help them out for that time period. And they probably don't know about it um, because let's be honest, most financial advisors, and I throw myself in that camp, we don't spend a lot of time on student loans. And since I don't spend a lot of time on student loans, I know there's some things out there that if I see a student loan, I would go research it, but I don't know it as well as you do. So you are the first that has done these videos that gets love on both channels. <laughs> All right. Happy to help whoever I can, however I can with, with more info if, if you want to go over it. Awesome. Uh, and that's actually kind of a big part of why I started my firm in the first place is I wanted to do work for clients that a lot of financial planners don't uh, have the opportunity to do, including student loans. Uh, and that means that I, I know a lot less than most financial planners would about things like Medicare and reverse mortgages and long-term care insurance and those types of things because I don't deal with retirees. Mm -hmm. But it means that I get to know a lot more about things like student loan planning or how to get started with investing or uh, financial planning when you are getting married for the, and combining finances with a spouse for the first time or having kids, dealing with the things that my clients regularly deal with. So I think it's important that there's a broad spectrum of financial planners serving all kinds of different clients out there. So clients who need that? I'll have a link to Steven's website on all about your Benjamins advisors. If Medicare, social security, all those things, that's your area. And these areas are not yours. It's always good to know that you can send those clients who need that to a good advisor who can take care of them. I will link to Steven's website on advisor of tomorrow as well. So I'm happy to get good people connected with good advisors. So real quick, um, again, that took us down a path that I didn't think we'd go, which is awesome because I don't want every video to be the same. How's working from home going? You mentioned earlier offline that you know your wife was planning on taking some time off with a newborn anyway, so you kind of had some convenience of that already being built in. But as far as being able to you know, meet with clients and do the things you need to do, how's everything going? Overall, it's going really well. Uh, I mean, we were already set up to do all of our work remotely anyway. I didn't always work in the office every day. Mm -hmm. uh, I have one full-time employee, CFP, who works from home most of the time. We've just joined two interns who are seem fully capable of, of working remotely. Uh, maybe about a third of our client meetings were already remote. All of our software is cloud-based. So as far as like the nuts and bolts of actually getting things done, that really hasn't been an issue at all. The biggest challenge with working remotely has just been uh, figuring out like what hours I can work and like not being really set up to work here at home instead of in the office. Mm -hmm. So like, for example, right now I'm sitting in our bedroom in the bed and it's kind of really uncomfortable when you're sitting here working all day, but where else am I going to sit? Like right. I can't sit out on the couch because there's a crazy, just crazy toddler running around. Uh, I can't sit at the kitchen table for the same reason. Like the internet connection sucks in the garage. Uh, we don't have an extra bedroom to be able to make into an office. So just something as simple as like, where do I work? And is it comfortable and quiet to be able to sit there? That's been an issue. Figuring out what hours do I work so that my wife doesn't go too long of a period with uh, dealing with the kids by herself, uh, but I'm still able to concentrate for a few hours and get things done. And then also sticking to a set schedule just for my own mental uh, sanity and for the benefit of my wife, but also so that I can block off times on my calendar scheduling tool so clients can schedule meetings for times that I know I'll be actually to be there for them. Um, so overall, it's been a little bit 
of adjustment, but really totally manageable. It, it could be much, much harder than it is, I think. I, I know you're very disciplined. So I know you're sticking to those blocks and you've got things in, in system, but have you found it difficult to turn off your mind with thinking about work at home? Like I, oh, yeah. I, I, don't, I, I feel like I'm always, I'm always on. I don't like, there are no weekends, even though it's the weekend, I'm still thinking about work and pl- yeah. trying to plug things in because I feel like during a regular day, I don't have the time to do those non-essential things that I want to do for the business where like when I was going to my office, that seven mile drive from downtown Fishers to the east side of Fishers gave me enough time to decompress and switch my mindset to dad mode. And I, I found it hard. I could, I've been present with my family. I take time. I put things away. And, but even when I'm laying on the couch with the boys, I'm thinking about things that I want to be doing for work. Um, and then when I'm in here – talking to you, I feel guilty that I'm not out there with the boys getting their lunch ready and spending time with them. So it's yeah. like, that's been one of the hardest things for me is I'm able to take care of clients. I'm able to do the things I need to do, but I just feel like I am running nonstop and there's no, no pause. Have you had that issue at all? Yeah. Okay. All right. I'm Absolutely. Glad, so glad I mean, I'm like not alone. <laughs> 15, minutes before, <laughs> 15 minutes before we started talking here, I was painting my daughter's nails for her awesome. and like t- I love it. 10 minutes after we're done here, I'm going to be switching gears again and like filling out some transfer paperwork for a couple of clients while I screen share with the intern to make sure that he learns how to do that. Mm -hmm. So I think that's just something we have to learn to deal with is switching gears all the time. And I know that I work much more effectively when I have a set block of one hour to focus just on this type of task. I love batching similar types of tasks together Mm -hmm. because I can get through it much more effectively. Uh, But that's not always possible. So we just have to manage the best we can. And uh, I think I do a a reasonably good job on both sides of not letting personal stuff bleed into work and not letting work stuff bleed into personal time. But I definitely fail at it a lot. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's been worse failing since I've been working primarily at home Mm -hmm. for shorter time blocks consecutively. Yeah. All right. In closing, what is one thing that you've done through this, you figured out through this whole process that's helped you maintain your discipline, be productive, stay on task, be a good dad, be a good husband. What's, what's one thing you would want to share that's been beneficial for you to the advisor community? I think con- two things come to mind. One is continuing to try to stay connected to a lot of my peers mm-hmm. through something like the, the AGC that you're doing, through just regular chats with friends of mine, through uh, interactions with clients, like just stay social, stay talking to other people or even just like Slack messages, emails, phone calls, whatever channel you can do it, still do that. Don't I can't allow myself to become too isolated because then every day just kind of drags on mm-hmm. and it's it's a bit much harder to, to manage things. And then the other thing that comes to mind is to the extent that you're able to, I think it's really helpful to continue having some sort of exercise routine, even if it's as simple as going for a walk for a couple blocks. Uh, this morning I went for a run and I feel so much better that I did. And it's, it's kind of tough to manage that with, with the young kids because their schedules are so variable. Mm-hmm. But my wife and I have been trying to support each other in that way to allow each of us an opportunity to have some mental space and to get some physical exercise, fresh air, instead of being just cooped up inside the house. So I think that's been really helpful for us too. I'm an advocate for fitness and health and that's come up multiple times yeah. on these videos. So um, not to be a surprise though, because I mean, the advisors that – I'm talking to are all successful in their own right. And most successful people have some type of routine that they go through to to take care of themselves, whether it's running, walking, whatever it might be, but there's something that they do to keep themselves sharp and energized. And another thing behind it, like when you go work out, you get that endorphin release, you feel good. Um, So that's another benefit of it. Awesome. Well, Hey, Steven, I appreciate uh, you taking some time. I don't want to keep you from those transfer paperwork. It's great that you are growing in this time. So, <laughs> <Please do. laughs> yeah. so get, get those things rolling and help the intern, but I appreciate you taking the time and sharing um, the knowledge on the student loan piece of things. And then also just what's helped you in your experience to this. Um, I think advisors and clients will find this a very valuable video. So I appreciate the time, man. Thanks, man. Have a chat for a few minutes, and I hope it's helpful to other people. And I think before I let you go, I have to uh, embarrass you for a minute uh, on your own podcast and say something really nice about okay. you. And, uh, I just say that I really appreciate everything you're doing with uh, the advisor growth community. I think it's a, a tremendously valuable thing that, that you and Taylor have started together. And um, Taylor told me about it. I, I've known him for a few years, and he told me about it, and I was really excited that he was involved. I thought it was a great idea, and I had no idea what to think of this Justin guy who I'd never met before <laughs> who he was doing it with. But um, over the, these last seven months or whatever it's been, uh, I got to say, I've been tremendously impressed with the way that you've conducted yourself and, and uh, started to become familiar with everything that you're doing through this. And I really appreciate it. I think you're having a bigger impact than you might realize. 
Awesome. So thank you for all that. Well, well, thank you. And part of me wants to edit that out, but I will leave it in. I I appreciate that very very much. I mean, the AGC has been a lot of fun. Um, It's exceeded my expectations and I had high expectations. And honestly, you know, I think the reason it is so successful and it's doing so much is because we have great advisors like you, like not to turn a compliment on to a compliment to you, but I don't, you know, Taylor and I could have this great idea, but if we don't have advisors in there who are innovative, who are willing to collaborate, who are growth minded, that live that vision, then it would have failed. It's, it's, you know, we just kind of put together the structure. We're lucky enough to attract great advisors. And then you guys are really running it. I'm, I'm in there trying to figure out what does Steven need or what do the advisors need to help them grow and reach that next level? What's their pain point that I can see? And then who can I bring in to help or who can I connect them through? So um, I think having a great community makes it very easy. But uh, I'm, I'm glad that you're in it and I'm glad it's valuable for you. My, my big goal that I tell everybody that's in the community when I do our one-on-ones is in 10 years, you know, you're one of the 50 OG members. Um, I hope that at our 10-year celebration, like 49 of the 50 are still members. I, I would love 50 out of 50, but I'm a realist. I know somebody's going to outgrow it or they might leave the profession. So um, I can't get all 50, but I, I want this to continue to bring a lot of value to the advisors um, and I really enjoy it. So thank you for the compliment. Thank you for being such an integral part of the community. Um, and if you're an advisor, link will be in there, advisorgc.com. You can learn more uh, about that as well. So thanks for giving me the opportunity to plug it as well. High five to that. <laughs> All right, Steve. Take care, man. Nice right. talking to you. Thanks a lot. Have a great one. Um, everybody, thanks for watching and listening, and we'll see you in the next episode.